Today on The Hobby Grotto, we're painting a Blight King of Nurgle. Now I'm going to start with the metal bits using my usual mix of Rhinox Hide and Iron Warriors to create a dark and dingy metallic look. And I'm doing this first so I can do a bit of dry brushing on some of the larger parts and not mess up the other base coats. You can make this more brown or silver depending on the look you're going for. I like to keep the metal nice and dark to create contrast with the brighter parts of the model. Doing a light dry brush now with silver would just save us time on uh, all the metallics. Once they get a wash they'll only need minimal highlighting later. I like to get any dry brushing out of the way early on because it's a hard thing to be precise with and you're going to splash over onto the other colours if you've got other stuff painted so this way you can use a nice big brush with no stress. The skin is easily the largest part of the model and is a strong focal point. This base layer of Cadian flesh tone has a bit of Screamer Pink mixed in to make it a bit more sickly and pinkish. Screamer Pink is a very strong colour so you only need a little bit. You don't want to stray too much from the vibe of Cadian flesh tone here or it won't work with our highlights later. But I still like it to have quite a pinkish quality to it. And I paint all aspects of the skin with this, the boils, the wounds, the organs, everything, because once it's all highlighted, I'm going to use glazes to create some other effects and colors. I usually go two coats and keep it nice and thin with skin. You don't need to be crazy consistent because there'll be a bunch more layers over this initial base coat. I decided to keep the inside of the chest cavity black to create more contrast and make it look a bit more weird, but this could just as easily be a dark red or something like that. I like to paint the armor in three different colors as seen here on some of my other Blight Kings. Predominantly dirty white with purple and green bits because they're the classic Nurgle colors. Starting with the dirty white which gets a base of XV88. I like the idea of my Blight Kings having this original noble white armor that's slowly decaying and being replaced with the green and purple colors of Nurgle. And using different colors also gives it that more ramshackle look. The parallels with 40k's Death Guard are also there and I just think off-white is a great colour to help build the contrast on Nurgle models. The green is Lauren Forest and it's a bit more of a washed out green which I love for Nurgle. It's almost like a, a bit mouldy looking and I like to concentrate this on the shoulder pauldrons uh, specifically in this colour scheme. While I wanted to include green in the armour, it's a very common way to paint Nurgle so I minimise it into a few key areas and then I got the best of both worlds. There's only a little bit on this particular Blight King, but I also like to paint random details green too. I paint all the helmets purple to try and give this idea of an insect or, or bug style head. Something about the little purple head makes me think that, I don't know why, but uh, it's become my theme. And uh, the loincloths as well get a bit of purple. So we get this nice distribution of the three armor colors uh, across the whole model. With minis that are very busy like this, it's uh, really important to get the color composition and, and placement right so we get a nice contrast. There are a couple of straps and details that I'm painting with Rhinox Hide. We don't need any more uh, colors on this model so a nice neutral brown for the bits and pieces is perfect. The reason I go brown over black for stuff like this generally is because leaving it black makes it look a, a little bit unfinished so I just hit it with a nice bit of Rhinox and then it's pretty much done. Nobody's looking at this stuff anyway. I'm also giving the base a quick dry brush with Dawnstone so I can hit it with the wash. Uh, that's just for my convenience, I'll be doing the bases later, but uh, you may definitely be doing your base in a different way to this. Washes work great for detailed models like this. I like to put the null oil on heavy to uh, help with the black lining effect. It just needs to be checked for pooling because there are lots of little holes and, and things on Nurgle minis where washes can collect in an undesirable way. And black as a wash is going to work perfectly for all these colors. And then we're just going to build the highlights up over the top of it. I'm going to tackle the skin first because it's the most time consuming part of the mini. And it's always good to work inside out to minimize mess. Because this is the base layer, it's going to show through the subsequent layers. So you can adjust how pink you want the skin here with the amount of screamer you add. I like to have this uh, pinkish hue in all the shading, so I'm repainting most of the surfaces here and only leaving the non oil shaded base in the deepest recesses.
The next layer up is pure Cadian Flesh Tone. And the good thing about this color is that it's not a blend like the previous one. So it's gonna give all your different paint jobs some consistency. You don't even have to be too neat with these highlights. Any kind of messiness works with the previous pinky tone and gives a splotchy effect that's perfect for Nurgle. I just make sure it's nice and thin so it keeps translucency. But if you want to paint Nurgle minis, they uh, like to show some skin. So uh, you've got to get through a lot of these slabs and they can be a bit grueling, you know, but uh, it will level up your skin painting skills enormously. The final highlight is to pick out all the lovely details on the skin and uh, I give all the boils and wounds this same highlight because I'm going to be colouring them later with glazes. Sometimes I even like to add a pure white highlight to the boils because it gets toned down a bit anyway with the glaze. As I always say, it's uh, really easy to get carried away with these final highlights so I often like to just strategically place them on focal points rather than trying to edge highlight everything. I'm going to be giving the skin a bit of a rest after this and come back later for the glaze. That's enough skin for the time being. And I'm just reapplying the base coat first. I have to say, Nurgle models will forever be some of my favourite minis to paint because they're so wacky and interesting looking. They really reward uh, experimenting with painting and using a combination of different techniques. And you don't have to worry about being neat, which is very liberating. Everyone should have a Nurgle army in addition to their other stuff, I'm telling you. To make the blend to bone smoother, I'm coming through and doing a layer of XV88 and Ushabti. A bit more sparingly than the, the base, remember we're highlighting here, but uh, we still want to keep it kind of grungy because this is a light colour. It's going to take a lot of coats, so keep the paint nice and watered down, preferably on a wet palette. Uh, I think it's the key for layering like this. I'm edge highlighting everything with Ushabti Bone. This will really brighten up the armor and uh, get us that nice dirty white look. You can almost glaze this color onto some of the larger flat surfaces of armor. Again, the beauty of Nurgle is uh, you don't have to be too neat with this stuff. If you go a little heavy on the highlighting, it will just look like damage and marks, and you can even glaze over it later and reduce its intensity, and it'll, it'll all just work with the style. Because the Blight Kings are such awesomely sculpted models, I find they take really well to uh, final extreme highlights like uh, little dots, mainly concentrated on pointy bits, but I also stipple a bright highlight like this on areas such as damage on, on the metal and pock marks to give it a bit more definition. This shoulder pauldron really gives me Koopa Trooper vibes and uh, I'm being careful to leave a bit of shading around all the spikes to make them look a bit more pronounced, but I really love this green. I have lots of greens and I usually like brighter greens, but this here, this is my Nurgle green. To lighten it with highlights, I just mix Iron Rack Skin in. Iron Rack Skin is kind of like a bone color, but uh, with a green tinge, so it's perfect for a lot of highlight mixes like this. Final point highlights are with pure iron rack, but uh, if you find these a little too harsh, mix in a spot of Lauren Forest to bring it back a bit. Now I have a bit of a confession. I love the fact that pretty much all the Nurgle Blight Kings are wearing helmets, or can be chosen to be built that way, because not having to paint any eyes and faces is truly wonderful. 
I also really like the design of the Nurgle helmets themselves. They're almost more faceless masks sometimes, and the facelessness adds a sinister element. I pretty much only use these kinds of heads in my own army. To blend up the highlights, I'm mixing in Jean Steeler Purple, and I like to do quite a few layers of highlights with a purple like this because it's such a dark colour, and it really responds well to extreme highlights. Pure Jean Steeler Purple is added to accentuate the extreme highlights, particularly on the, the helmet details like the eye holes to make them stand out, otherwise the, the face can look a little bit boring. I even take it one step further by mixing up a white and purple highlight for the final details. I like to paint a highlight like this uh, on the bottom part of the eye holes to make them stand out a bit more, as well as uh, on the points of the fabric. Before I get onto the glazes, I'm going to finish a few more details. A subtle highlight uh, on this wood because it has some nice texture. Just a quick mix of Rhinox and XV88 is all you need for this kind of thing. But uh, if I want a paler wood, I'll sometimes mix bone with Rhinox instead. And I'm also adding a few silver highlights here and there, mainly on the rims of the bells to make them pop a bit more. If you hadn't noticed, this guy has uh, a lot of bells. I think I tried to use them all on this model. Now I'm going to apply a series of glazes on the model, starting with Wildwood Contrast on all the dings in the armour. Uh, well this is a bit more of a wash this one, but the reason I use contrast paints for glazes is because they're already at a handy consistency, but any of these colours can be made with traditional paints, you know, thinned down with medium. Contrast paints just save a bit of time and effort and make it more consistent. All the boils are going to get some Plague Bearer flesh, and I should point out that although contrast paints are already a good consistency for this kind of work, I do still like to dilute them with a touch of medium or water because you want to make sure these are really thin, and then you do multiple glaze coats to increase the intensity of colour. You don't want it to go on too thick or it will ruin all the previous highlights. I like to use a combination of Volopus Pink and Magos Purple for all the wounds and tender flesh. And I paint this glaze in the wound itself, as well as on the skin around it. If you keep this nice and thin, you can build up a natural blend on the skin and make some parts look more red and, and pronounced and, and more sore looking. I actually, uh, I went a bit too far on the giant open chest wound and lost some of the contrast and detail. So I actually came back later and applied a dark purple glaze to some of the inner parts. It's really easy to go over the top with glazing, so just be careful and keep it thin enough that uh, you barely see anything going on. You'll start to really see it after a few coats. I'm also applying Magos Purple to some of the deeper folds of skin and areas like the tentacle to give a bit more definition and, and reinforce that sick bloated look. I was going to glaze the tentacle green actually, but uh, I decided to keep it pink in the last minute because it was reminding me of Krang, uh, which is a good thing. Finally, I'm giving all the pustules a dab or two of Creed Camo just to make them look a bit more gross. And there we have a Blight King of Nurgle, some of my all-time favourite GW models, and always a pleasure to paint because you can get crazy. Thanks for watching the video, don't forget to check out some other Nurgle stuff, and we'll see you next time on the Hobby Grotto.